Imagine being so incensed by somebody on the internet that you drive 400 miles after tracking them down online to hit them over the head with a wine bottle at their place of work. This is the story of Richard Britton, the thin-skinned author who bottled one of his critics after his novel The World Rose sent her to sleep. This is also the story of a former television game show champion, a university graduate, a poet and writer who was destroyed by his obsessions and narcissism. Here's a clip of Richard before the media had any whiff of his violent malevolence. Richard, what did you make of that? Eight. Eight, okay. John? Just a seven, which I'm not even sure of. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear from your just seven that you're not sure of then. Low knees. Low knees. Okay. And your eight, Richard? Salon in. Can you spell that for me? S A L O N E E N. Okay. Um, no, I'm afraid we stop at saloon, oh. but no, oh. no, sal no okay. salonine. Richard first came to public attention on the 11th of September 2006 as a 19-year-old. The show that made Richard famous was Countdown, an institution for the out of work and early finishers in the UK. Richard won the coveted Countdown teapot and was invited back for a further seven occasions. The maximum allowed is eight victories and entered the pantheon of great Countdown contestants. He was crowned the 55th series champion and awarded a leather bound Oxford dictionary for his impressive efforts. Britain, humble in victory, proudly declared himself as immediately recognisable due to his countdown victory. Hello, my name's Richard Britton and I'm a countdown champion. Um, if you're a British viewer, you probably immediately recognise me as the winner of series 55, uh, which I won back in 2006. Countdown. Let's be honest here, a countdown winner is hardly David Beckham. I was champions Richard Britton, 18 <laughs> years of age uh, from Enfield, an A-level student. You've been going well, haven't you? Too, you? Happy with your score so far? Yeah. Yeah, two, two uh, centuries and two 90s, that's high standard stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's Richard. Now meet our challenger. Well that was Richard's time on Countdown. Time to bask in the glory and uphold the tradition of former Countdown champions. Well. Beyond Countdown, Britain's story took an unsettling turn. His infatuation with Ella Durant, a student he met at university, unfolded into a harrowing narrative of stalking and obsession. His relentless pursuit, fueled by poems and letters, spiralled into a chilling pursuit, leading to court warnings and Durant's relocation in a desperate bid to escape his shadow. Richard met Ella before her 21st birthday at the student union bar and they struck up a friendship. Ella served him drinks, she was friendly, which is the role of a barmaid, and described Richard as odd but harmless. Richard added Ella on Facebook and become a regular at the student union. They both signed up to represent Greenwich University on the BBC's University Challenge. Needing a photo of Ella to send to the BBC, Richard went through Ella's Facebook to find a picture and then began relentlessly commenting about how beautiful she was. At this point, Ella grew concerned and notified the university. Britain had now worked out Ella's hours at the student union bar and visiting primarily during those times when he would just sit and stare. Ella decided to keep a distance from Britain and unfriended him on Facebook and told him that she was not interested. Richard's rejection sent him into a spiral of alcoholism. He was banned from the student union bar and sent love letters to Ella. He disturbingly got her address off the game show application for the university challenge, which they never participated in. The crush and infatuation had developed into stalking. Ella graduated from university and went to live with her mother. The nightmare ended, except in 2014, having located Durant's mother's address by tracing the electoral register, he once again started sending poems, drawings and love letters to Ella via her mother's home. Once upon a time, there was a great forest realm. High up on a hill among the yew trees stood a castle. In that castle lived a princess, and her name was Ella Tundra. Her hair was golden brown, and her eyes were blue like the ocean. 
This is Britain's debut novel he wrote intending to emulate Tristan and Isadel or Romeo and Juliet. The World Rose was written for Ella. The blurb reads as follows. An epic fairy tale romance set in a semi-fictional ancient world containing elements of action, adventure, poetry and comedy. The title has a triple meaning. The central character is a renowned beauty, the rose of the world. While the rose flower features heavily in the plot and it also implies that the world rose up. It goes on, but I'm bored already. Probably HarperCollins and Penguins weren't interested. Richard's first audience was Wattpad, a platform for wannabe authors who post in the hope of getting feedback, and who knows, getting picked up by Hollywood in the process. Not for Richard, unfortunately. The book got savaged on Wattpad. Richard sent the book to Ella, but Ella, despite her initial feelings of fear, dismissed it. She was now in Glasgow and had moved on from Richard, until he turned up one day outside her work. In Richard's terrifying words, I decided to try to make my book known by getting into the national news. I found out that she worked in Glasgow so I travelled there with a plan. I was going to tell her that if she came with me and we faked a kidnapping, we would both become famous. We would go into the hills and camp out for a few days while the nation searched. I had brought the necessary supplies. However, Ella did not engage with Richard and ran as soon as she saw him. Again Richard expands on the failed wooing as follows. I left Glasgow and I think our relationship is finished now. I gave it my best shot. I really thought that we would become famous. We would have disappeared for a few days. People would have read my book and she could have played the lead role. But alas, I'll have to find another way. The endless rejection sent Richard into a state of dizzying despair and as he logged into Goodreads to see how his magnum opus was being received, there was one review by Paige Rowland. She hated the book. Richard snapped. He found Roland's details online. Being a young girl, Paige uploaded a lot of her life on Facebook, including where she worked, where she lived, and what she did in her free time. Richard tracked Paige down and found her in the local grocery stores. This was in Glenroth, Scotland, a 400 mile journey from Richard. On October the 3rd, 2014, Paige was stacking the cereal aisle in her ASDA uniform. Roland spotted her, picked up a bottle of wine, walked to the aisle where Paige was and cracked it over her head. Then walks out of the supermarket without saying a word. Paige Rowland was seriously injured in the attack. Between the day of the attack and the court case, Richard returned to his blog and makes two new posts, a statement of remorse for what he did and a re-evaluation of romance, both sharing his perspective that he knows what he did was wrong. He posts a few more times in this period, some were poems, some about how he was receiving therapy and one post critiquing Julian Black's teachings about how to pick up women which is pretty ironic when you think about it. Richard was sentenced to two and a half years for the attack on Paige. Richard had the nerve to send Paige love letters after his release which we can all agree is the worst attempt at wooing in human history bottling someone and then sending them love letters. Here's how one went. I dreamed of you last night. Are you going to send me back to prison? Maybe I need it. I'm bored out of my mind. How is the nursing degree going? I was quite surprised they revealed such information about you in court. I was tempted to get a bus ticket to Dundee and come visit you, but I thought that might look weird. Any chance we could become friends? We could keep our communication secret like we did in last night's dreams. Recently, Richard has been quiet, and maybe, just maybe, has seen the error of his ways. However, he has a history of violence, a history of stalking, and is a dangerous man. And dare I say it, without the threat of violence, he's also a crappy writer. I hope Richard Britton never watches this video. I hope that he never finds me. Thank you.